Hi guys, we're going to revisit this pulse motor setup that we had a look at before. Um, most of my machines, if I can't see anything in them, end up on the shelf as spare parts. But this one um, I've pulled out again because I believe we were looking at things a little wrong last time and this machine is actually doing a lot better than we thought it was and I'm regard, uh, referring to um, some comments and information from the people who responded to the video which is really good that is how we learn uh, reason foremost if you're watching this I would most certainly in, um, appreciate your input uh, this will be in two parts because one part is just going to be too big to upload um, the machine itself we'll be looking at in the next video but you really need to know all this to understand as to how this machine is hooked up so the first thing we're going to talk about is DC electrolytic capacitors now these have two types of resistance they have what's called a internal or parallel resistance which is very high up in the mega ohms. This allows the caps to take a charge very fast and it also um, an indication as to how high a resistance it is. You just fill your cap up with voltage and you will see the voltage slowly um, disappear from the cap. The slower it disappears or the slower the voltage goes down in the cap the higher the parallel resistance um, they also have what's called a series resistance which is the opposite to the parallel resistance in that it is very low in large caps like these it will be one ohm or lower even better than a battery which is normally 1 to 1 1.2 ohms if your battery is good. So this also this series resistance also allows it to put out a lot of current in a big hurry. Um, you can dump one of these caps in a split second. Um, and if we had a high series resistance, we wouldn't get that power to dump out as quick. So Parallel resistance or internal resistance is very high and series resistance is very low. These caps, of course, when hooked up like this in a circuit, are being used in the series um, way, which means the resistance across the cap in series circuits is very low. 1 ohm, so not even worth worrying about that at all. Now, the other thing to know is it doesn't matter what you put on that cap, what type of duct inductor, how high the resistance is, um, you put it onto a cap in a series circuit, it will only make the resistance of that cap lower. It will never be high. Okay. The next thing we're going to look at is potential difference in voltages. Um, most of you are going to know this and you're probably asking why are you telling us all this shit we know. It's simple, there's some out there that don't know and to understand how this works I'm going to show you how it is hooked up. We have 212, we have 312 volt batteries. I have hooked two up in series, which of course is giving us our 25.7 volts. Now, if I take a lead and we go from this negative here to our third battery negative, our potential difference in voltage now becomes 12.8 volts, even though we have our three batteries. So we've got 12 volts, 
We lift it up another 12 volts and then we dropped it down because we hooked it up this way and it brought it back down to 12.81 volts. This is how this machine is going to be hooked up. These three caps are our third battery. This fourth cap is the storage from the output of the machine so as we can run our resistor which in this case is an incandescent bulb. So 12 volts. So if we now take this off and hook the meter up to our 24 volts as we would have it. Um, anyone seen my last video you would see that's where the meter is hooked up on the two batteries 25.7 volts. So now this is going to be our pulse motor. This positive as you know now becomes our negative. So we're going to hook our negative of our pulse motor up to our third battery which is these three caps. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our amp meter and we're going to hook it to the other side of our pulse motor and we're going to hook it to in there correctly and I should actually have this around the other way so the meter reads correctly I'm going to hook it to a positive so now how we were reading this machine before we have 25.6 volts at 266 milliamps. Is that the current that our pulse motor is drawing? No, it is not. It is an actual fact. 260 milliamps at 12.97, which is our potential difference in voltage. So when we're measuring our machine in the next video, we'll be measuring from the positive on the cap, which will be our negative, and the positive on the two batteries, which is our potential difference in voltage across the system. So this motor is actually running 13 volts, 264, 65 milliamps, not 25.5 volts at 260 or 65 milliamps. And we can confirm this like this. If we disconnect all this mess. We simply hook our meter up to one single 12 volt battery. As you can see, so an RPM. So milliamp draw and of course the same voltage. So this is what I was trying to explain in the last video as to how the setup was working. It was not drawing 26 volts from our two 12 volt batteries. It was drawing the amps at the potential difference of the voltage we had. Pulse motor runs from the caps. Battery the current that was flowing through our resistor, which is another incandescent bulb, the same as this one. That current what is what was keeping the caps topped up. And it was not the amps times these two battery voltages at the end times the potential difference between this one battery and this second battery which was hooked up in the same way that I just showed you then. So in my next video I'm going to show you the system hooked up. I'm going to show you the current flowing through this light bulb that is keeping the caps topped up. And I'm going to show you the current coming out 
on the other side of the pulse motor and I will also show you the way this is set up um, on the scope the transistor switching on at minus 10 volts that's right minus 10 volts not plus and you're going to ask how does it do that well I will show you that in the next video but until then I just wanted to explain to you very clearly how the machine was hooked up and as to the two points in which we have to measure the current flow and that of course is our potential difference of voltage so until the next video cheers from the tin men